Adam, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Uh, what does disruption mean to you? Disruption means to me the sudden stopping of the way work has been done in the past and the reevaluation of how work should be done in the future. Uh, how does this change things from a leadership point of view? That's a very big question. I think there's a lot of different answers to it. I think from a leadership, the whole point of leadership is to govern a large group of people. And I think from a leadership point of view, they have to think throughout the organization. The first part is going to be an entry level job. When manual work is disrupted and true automation comes into the enterprise, what does it mean to be a first year analyst at a bank? What kind of work are they going to be doing? Whereas in the past, a lot of the work that a first year analyst would be doing is looking at information and extracting it and typing it into a structured format. All of that work is going to be automated. So what does the first year of employment look like? Then there's a the notion of middle management. So middle management is typically there to, to govern you know, teams of 6, 10, 20 people. When AI is able to determine what a person is good at and delegate the right task to the right person based on their capacity, what does middle management look like? And then there's a senior level uh, question of how do you evaluate the market? How do you evaluate what customers want? And how do you change the way you deliver service based on what a customer needs from you from a value perspective? So it's really going to be transformation throughout the organization. So in your mind, how will this impact the job market? I think in the near term, there may be some strains on the economy. But in the long term, um, certainly my company and all of my colleagues are very bullish about uh, the future of, of employment. I think AI in particular offers a tremendous platform for new businesses to be built, for new purposes for human intelligence to be deployed. Um, so I think in the long term, just like every major innovation, there's been a short term pain of, okay, we no longer have jobs on an assembly line. We are no longer bolting a panel on a car because a robotic arm is doing it. Fast forward to today, it's going to be the same thing with knowledge workers. We no longer have thousands of documents to pour through and structure unstructured data into, into databases. So how do we use our human intelligence now? And I think the answer to that question is going to be some really, really wonderful new jobs that will hit the market. Uh, a lot of people believe that AI as well as automation will actually largely hit the entry level uh, job market. Yeah. Do you agree with that view? Absolutely. I think employers are going to have to rethink what it means to be a first or second year employee. I also think we have to rethink how we, how we educate kids. Right now we're in a fact-based education system. So even when I was growing up, the biggest thing I had to do in school was to memorize facts about history, about statistics, and math. Like what is the role of math now that we have super, super computers and even iPhones to do advanced computation. So I think all the way from, from education from day one, to the first, second, third year of employment, we have to rethink what kind of skills we're, we're instilling in students. So how do you think things will change from an employee's perspective? From an employee's perspective? Yeah. I think work will become a lot more engaging. Like if you think about the average knowledge worker at a big business like Infosys or Tata or Wipro, and all of these guys are being very, very smart about embracing new technology, I think we're gonna move from a repetitive routine work system to a system of exceptions. Smart automation, even the best automation, is not going to be able to solve every problem. And what we're going to see is automation will be escalating problems and exceptions that it can't figure out to people to solve those problems. So that's going to be a lot more fun for workers. Uh, how important uh, or relevant is planning as far as a digital business is concerned? Planning. Change man management is probably the biggest question that our customers have. Like our customers are big banks and insurance companies and information providers and change management is a significant question so planning for extra capacity like suddenly when 30 or 40 or 50 percent of your workload is is eliminated is, and freed up how do you deploy that that human talent when 60 70 80 percent of your revenue if you're a service provider comes from the performance of manual work like data categorization and extraction how do you plan to make up that revenue in this new world where smart machines that are much, much cheaper and faster than people are going to be doing all this work? So planning is, is a massive part of it. But I, I, would not, um, I would not underestimate the importance of action. I think in this environment, action is more important than planning. Starting early and iterating, like if you make a mistake with your action, then you plan and then you iterate again and then you take more action. So I think a system of 
taking bold action along with planning is imperative. Okay, what's the one big disruption that you uh, expect in 2016? Smart automation. Last year was about robotics, so using rules-based automation to open and close applications and move data from one place to another. That was 2015. 2016 is going to be about cognitive automation. Okay, Adam. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me.